Hello everyone and welcome to this release note for Lyra version 030. I'm Michele, the author and lead maintainer of Lyra, and today I'm gonna guide you through this new release. Uh, with that release we introduce a new breaking change, so I'm gonna show you how to migrate to the latest version for this software, and we also introduce a couple of new great features, so I'm gonna show them to you, and please, if you have any comment, feedback, please uh, go on GitHub or join our Slack channel so that we can discuss them together. So let's start with the elephant in the room, uh, the breaking change, let me show you what's going on here. So I've already created uh, this file, and basically it's a... Uh, uh, brand new project, we just installed your search slash Lira. Um, please make sure that this is the correct version. So 030 is the version we are creating this video for. And we need nothing more. Um, we have an events.json file which basically contains 37,000 and more events. And we're gonna feed the database with that data. As you can see, we have a schema definition. We just take the description and the category for every single event. So description and category one in our case. And we basically normalize the data, use the insert batch function, which is an asynchronous function that allows us to feed the database without blocking the event loop. Then we go uh, search the results, uh, sorry, for some results when searching Viking, limit the results to three, and then we are gonna print everything to the console. So. Let's go here and try this out. We're inserting the event, and here it is. So, as you can see, uh, one big difference we have from the previous version, which was previous version 0 to 8, if I remember correctly. <laughs> so, we basically have 72 results, but every single result now has a different shape. So, we have objects, we have a unique ID, uh, which is part of the uh, of the Lyra system, so this is an ID that has been generated by Lyra, a score that we're gonna discuss in the next chapter for this video, and the original document itself. So it's really important to migrate whatever we had to enter the document property uh, to access the original document. Let me show you how it was with the previous version of Lyra. So if we go here and change this to 0 0.8, I will keep that terminal open so we can make some comparison. Let's create a new terminal. Let's remove the node modules and the yarn lock file just in case. Let's install. So we are now installing Lyra, the older, older ver version, as you can see here. If we try to run this exact same code, we are inserting the events. And as you can see, this is pretty different, and I'm gonna show you why in just a second, but as you can see, hits contains basically the original document plus an ID. So the ID that has been generated by Lyra itself. Now the document is inside the document um, property. So um, if you need to upgrade to version 0.3.0, which I highly recommend for multiple reasons that we're gonna discuss during this video, make sure uh, to access this property. This is the only breaking change we introduce uh, for this version. So now let's go back, install the newest version for Lyra. So let me kill this and, oops, remove node modules, just in case, and your log file, <clears throat> oops. Okay, all right. So let's install everything from scratch. Okay, we have the latest version of Lyra installed right now, and we can go discuss the second uh, feature, new feature for, for the software. You may have noticed that we have a new property, and in fact, if we run the code above, um, that we, we change the shape of the returning object for a very specific reason. So if we now run node index.js, we again insert the data, and we have a uh, um, an array of objects that now contains a score property. So you might have noticed with the latest versions of Lyra uh, that the results were unsorted. Uh, that basically means that uh, we didn't sort our results by, um, by any kind of magic formula to understand which was the um, result that was more relevant to your search, but this is not longer the case for version three, uh, 030. So in fact, we can test this uh, by going here and say limit 3, but putting an offset of let's say 10. 
So let's keep in mind that we now have score to 0, 6, 8, 1. Uh, so score will always be a property between 0 and 1, and the greater is the property, uh, the more accurate the result will be. So that basically means that in our uh, recent search, these are the results that are more accurate. If we run this again, we are basically putting an offset of 10, uh, which means that we now might have less accurate results. So we're basically paginating our query. In fact, as you can see now, the score has been lowered. So we used to have 0, 06 something, now we have 0, 05. And if we go back here and say offset to 16, let's test this, I do expect lower results again. Yes, exactly. 0, 3, 8, etc. So we are basically now ranking our results using the TFIDF algorithm, uh, which allows us to calculate the relevancy of a term inside the document and hopefully give you most accurate results with ease. So um, this is one of the biggest features we released so far, and I'm particularly pr proud for this, and I want to thank uh, my friend and colleague Paolo and Sonia for helping me with this, because it has been almost tragic to implement, <laughs> I would say. So now feature number three. Uh, Lira is now officially semi-schemaless. <laughs> Let me show you what I mean by that. So with the previous versions of Lira, uh, we couldn't run anything like that. If we define a schema like uh, description and category, we couldn't enter anything like random and let's say math random, right? We can test it uh, by going here, install an older version again, so 2.8, remove node modules and the yarn lock file, install. If we now go here and try to run this code, in fact, you will see an error. So Lira has been initialized with the following schema, but found the following doc. So the problem is with the random property. We, we don't have this property in the schema definition, right? So we decided to move away from this approach. So let's remove node modules and your lock file again. Let's install the latest version again. I know there's a better way for doing that, but you know, it's, it's just fast. <laughs> if we now run, um, let's say offset to zero and limit to three again. If we now run the code above without any modification, it will insert everything and will perform the search only on the file, on the fields that has been indexed. So we basically create indexes for description, category, and nothing more. You can basically enter whatever you want. You can do like nested properties such as, uh, I don't know, uh, foo, bar it's equal to 10 and you can rerun the code again it will work just fine of course you won't be able to um to search through all the nested properties so for example if you go here and you say find me and a very specific string okay which i'm sure it's not part of the original array uh, of elements this is not gonna be uh, found because it's not indexed but if we put this as a part of our schema definition. So uh, let's say if we go in events and we put that in category one, hopefully we can find this. Exactly. So this is what I mean. You will only be able to search for this particular string when it's part of one known schema property. So that's pretty important, but this will also allow you to index more and more data, uh, of course, without the need for uh, specifying the full document shape, which if you're working on a lot of data uh, can be a kind of an overkill. And this hopefully makes things a bit more, I don't know, accessible and easier to, to deal with with the newest version of Lira. So here is another great feature uh, we introduced with uh, version 0.3.0. So with the latest versions of Lira, um, we had some research properties uh, such as ID. So you couldn't create a property with an ID. And that's because Lira already generates its own ID for every single document, and this would cause a conflict. So if we go here and we say just like ID is equal to math.random to string, 
which is really bad. Don't even try using this, of course. It's not good, uh, but I'm just trying to make a point. And we now try to run, let's say, Viking attack. Okay. This should work just fine. Exactly. So you will see that we have an ID, which is part of the Lira ID uh, definition. So this is generated by Lira. We have our score and we have the document ID. So uh, you can also create like score, for example, and it will never be in conflict with the Lira score because it will be part of the document property. One very last thing before closing this release note video, uh, we now export some internals that allows you to extend, create plugins, or do literally whatever we want with the, with the Lira instance that you're creating. So um, this is still experimental, may change at any time, so please make sure uh, to keep an eye on the release notes for every future release because these might change. And let me show you how it works. We basically can import a number of new functions from um, Lira Search, Lira, this common JS if you're using common JS or ASM if you're using modules at slash internals and format nanoseconds for example. It basically um, takes a big integer and this is the same function you're using for example for the elapsed time if you want to format elapsed time in a human readable format. And let's say okay to this if you run the code this is 19 seconds, but let's test this with this number. This is gonna be 10 microseconds. So you basically can see that we can use this. This is 10 nanoseconds. Uh, we can basically use this to format nanoseconds into human readable, uh, readable uh, formats. So this is the first one I'm gonna show you. We also have this get nanoseconds time, which should be runtime agnostic. If you find any bug, this is still experimental again. Um, if you find any bug, please help us um, understanding where we can reproduce this. Um, this is basically returning the exact time. It's like um, new date. If you do like console log plus new date, this is the exact same thing, except for the fact that this is uh, precise to the nanoseconds. So we're gonna, we basically use this in the internals of Lira for calculating the elapsed time for a query research. And we use that for benchmarking purposes. One other example is intersect token scores. And this is a bit more tricky. So let me give you an example. Uh, this is basically an algorithm that allows us to calculate the intersection of N documents and their, uh, and their TF-IDF scores. So if we go here, for example, and wrap this into a console log statement, all right, it will basically find the um, uh, foo, which is the duplicated property, and bar, which is the other duplicated property amongst all the arrays, and it's gonna sum the number, uh, which is the TF-IDF score. Um, I perfectly know that this is not the correct approach. This is an acceptable approach for calculating the score and the relevance of a term. Uh, we will be implementing the cousin similarity uh, in the next releases to make the results even more um, efficient, of course, but also optimized and relevant. So please, again, keep in consideration this is highly experimental, so this can change at any time. Another function we are exporting is the include function, and we basically use this to as a, as a faster alternative to array.includes. So it basically returns true or false if an element is present in a an, in an array. And one last function I want to show you is the bounded Levistein, uh, which basically um, computes the Levistein distance and exits early if the current distance is greater than a threshold that we define. Let me give you an example. Let's try to log uh, moon, le the Levistein distance between moon and lions, which is 3. So distance is 3, it's bounded true. If we say, okay, maximum distance should be 1, in that case, distance it's minus one and uh, it's bounded, it's equal to false. So we are using this function internally to calculate the edit distance between two strings. You can use it wherever you want. And okay, I said that was the last one, it's not true. We also export the tokenize function, which is basically the tokenize function, of course, we are using inside Lyra. So it basically takes 
a string as an argument and returns the tokenized version for the string. And this is not all. Um, you can basically pass a language so that it can tokenize using different languages, all the languages that are currently supported in Lyra. Uh, you can allow duplicates or remove all the duplicates. You can configure the tokenizer just like you do inside Lyra, so it will um, allow you to create stemming interfaces, custom stop words, etc. So make sure to check this out because it's particularly good in my opinion if you want to use a tokenizer, for example, in another project that has nothing to do with Lyra. So that was all for today and make sure to go on GitHub and search for Lyra and start it and also take a look at the new documentation that we created for this release. Uh, this was a pretty intense release to do so we wanted to, to create some very good new documentation. Of course if you find any typo please report this to us so we can uh, fix it. Uh, we also have a Slack link so if you have any kind of problem please check out the Slack um, space so that we can help you. Trying to understand how to integrate Lyra with your existing system, your existing web application, whatever we need whatever you need we are here for helping you and yeah that's it for me thank you for following see you next time